What's up, everybody? So it is Crossover Thursday. That means we're talking to Lauren Cox of Locked On Bears for the show today. But there's not a lot to talk about with the upcoming game. It's kind of a meaningless one. So instead, we talked about the future of our respective franchises, and the conversation went to a really cool place. Can't wait to share it with you here on the Locked On Vikings podcast. You are Locked On Vikings. Your daily Minnesota Vikings podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into this Locked On Bears, Locked On Vikings crossover Thursday. Lauren Cox from Locked On Bears alongside Luke Braun from Locked On Vikings getting ready for this Bears-Vikings Week 18 matchup. But this isn't necessarily a game that anyone is particularly excited about i mean it's, yeah who it's, cares <laughs> it's yeah, right i mean it's it's football and we're gonna miss football when it's not on our tvs every sunday in the off season and we're gonna look back and, and wish there were more games to play but there aren't stakes in this one and teams aren't really playing for anything so we thought we would focus a little less on the exact x's and o's matchups of everything that we're going to see on sunday especially because the teams just played like three weeks ago but to look a little bit more bigger picture at the states of these franchises, where the directions are, and then maybe find some ways to disagree a little bit more than, than you and I do typically, Luke. Yeah, our budding uh, bitter rivalry. We're going to finally put a little water on that thing and see if we can't get the leaves to turn green again. Well, I think both these franchises are hoping for some kind of like green growth and future, like some sort of <laughs> progress. And it'll, it'll be fun later as we sort of debate which side of this we would we would rather be on. And I, I, I'm feeling it'll sort of shape some of our questions as we work through this. But like, yeah. The, for the Vikings, like I, I know the, the question has always sort of been like what's going to happen with Kirk Cousins. But I think I guess the first question is, is what's going to happen with Mike Zimmer and, and and whether those things are like specifically tied together? Like, are they is it does it have to be one or the other or does it specifically have to be mm-hmm. both or, or are they completely sort of independent decisions? You got to go even a layer higher. It's what's going to happen to Rick Spielman. Sure. Um, that that is going to decide what happens with the coach. Then that. That what happens with the coach decides what happens with the quarterback, I think, is, is going to be how this goes. Um, so I, here's what I think based on what some of the beat reporters around have said and hinted at and kind of it's a little bit of streets whispering. It sounds like we're going to do a little bit of a reassignment with Rick Spielman. I do, if I were a betting man, I don't think I would bet on Rick Spielman being the GM. Uh, in the future but I would also say he's going to be somewhere in the org with some sort of fake job title like the vice president of operation director like some kind of fake title where he still gets to be I mean he has worked in the Vikings organization for 16 years in some capacity which is basically the entirety of the Wilfs ownership period so they're very close they talk every day I don't think they're going to kick this dude out on the street but I think with a new GM I think it's pretty much a foregone conclusion that Mike Zimmer is going to go, although that will also be made very amicable, very professional. Um, And then we go into a head coaching search and then whatever happens with the GM and the coach is going to decide with Kirk Cousins. So I have no idea what they're going to do with Kirk Cousins. The two viable options are extend him. He's got a forty five million dollar fully guaranteed cap hit in twenty twenty two. So use an extension to get that cap hit down. Signing bonus shenanigans. We've seen that a million times or trade him to a willing partner and just dump that guaranteed money on somebody else and start your quarterback search. Those are the two options. I don't know what they're going to do. It really depends on who they get. Is there, I mean, from, from your perspective, is there much of a reason to, to not shed, like if you were in charge to not shed Kirk Cousins, it would seem like obviously a head coach come in and say like, Oh, I want to, I do want to try and win right now. And that maybe this roster is somewhat close enough to being able to compete. And, And me as the head coach, I can be enough with Kirk Cousins and with these wide receivers to try and take it to the next level. But I I would just sort of get the sense that like Vikings fans in general are kind of tired of the ups and downs and the just the weirdness of the whole Kirk Cousins era and Zimmer and just (laughs) wanting to restart, not not completely everything up, but but hit that reset button at at the, the most critical leadership positions of GM, head coach, quarterback. Yeah, look, 
The Kirk Cousins, Mike Zimmer era has missed the playoffs three out of four years. That's the bottom line. You can argue over whose fault that is. Should it have been better defense, better O-line, who's who's really to blame? If it were me, I we, if I were running the team, Kirk Cousins would have been gone already. He, I probably wouldn't have extended him in 2020. Um, if you listen to my show back then, I was against that. Um, so obviously I'm on the trade train and I've got all my reasons evaluating Kirk Cousins and stuff. But from a bigger picture perspective... My opinion of Kirk Cousins isn't necessarily that oh he's good, he's just too expensive. It's that he's not good enough. Um, he leaves too much meat on the bone. He makes too many mistakes with his reads. He uh, makes too many timing mistakes. The ball comes out late too often. That's It's just not good enough, and it leaves wide open receivers. I mean, they've had Stefan Diggs streaking down the field, Adam Thielen, Justin Jefferson, even K.J. Osborne have all had wide open touchdown opportunities, and then Kirk didn't find it or did you know, there was, you know, held it too long, took a sack instead, even though he had a throwing window and stuff. Plays that are like demonstrably his fault, even though the O-line is bad. And there are plays that are the O-line's fault as well. And we can sort all those. But that's kind of my eval of Kirk Cousins. I'm not interested in it. And personally, I'm at peace. I don't think that there is a path to be competitive in 2022. Um, if they keep Kirk Cousins, I don't think they're competitive. If they move on from Kirk Cousins, they would have to absolutely nail a draft pick, Justin Herbert, like totally crush it to be competitive. And I just don't see that as a realistic thing. So if 2022 has to be a rebuilding year, I kind of don't feel like we have a choice. So if 2022 is a rebuilding year, then th let's rebuild. Let's yeah, let's hit the reset button. So I am on team. Get rid of everybody and let's make a whole new build of the Vikings. Yeah, but, like, but it doesn't seem like it should be like, I mean, I know you're exaggerating when you say everybody, but like, it seems like there there is like a lot of that, like, especially offensively, like talent under the age of 30 yeah. ascending the players. Like, I, I know that defense has always been sort of a, a older and, and kind of a weirdly like they've half, sure. but not really, but like how, how much of a rebuild a bull up does it actually need to be? Well, those are the guys you build around. You can build around a Justin Jefferson and a Dalvin Cook. You can make an offense out of those two guys, right? You can make a defense with the Neil Hunter there. And um, I mean, everybody if else is kind of old. If he if he's there, although Daniel Hunter's contract situation, he has kind of signed away the leverage he has to like hold out or whatever. Like he got sure. the contract he wants. He either gets to test free agency or he gets a gigantic extension. Um, and I, for me, I'm extending Daniel Hunter and you know, guaranteeing the money that he they, they already kind of pre-negotiated it and it's just a lever they have to pull and I would pull the lever um, like you. But you and there is no defense in the world that doesn't use Daniel Hunter. So there are pieces you can keep in place. Brian O'Neill's solid right tackle. Very good. Also just signed an extension. So you're not getting rid of him anyways. But you build around those pieces. Um, that is a rebuild. You know, a rebuild doesn't start from absolute scratch like what the Dolphins tried to do. Right. You have pieces you build around them. Yeah, I think that's. I think that's where so honestly kind of where the Chicago Bears are starting to find themselves in a, a little bit here. And we'll we'll sort of turn yeah. our attention to the state of that franchise. I think we'll we'll find some similarities in in between them, but mm -hmm. then some some clear differences as well that will make for I think some some lively debate at the end here of which which position we would rather be in for these two franchises. That's all coming up on today's crossover Thursday episode, Locked on Bears and Locked on Vikings. Today's Crossover Thursday episode is brought to you by our friends at BetOnline.ag, the number one place to recommend for all of your sports betting needs. Looking at this Bears-Vikings matchup, the line at BetOnline is Bears plus three and a half. It's actually moved a little bit more away from the Chicago Bears as the line has shifted throughout this week. Bears, of course, uh, on the road, the underdogs here, a plus 170 money line there. The Vikings straight up are minus 195. And the over-under set at 44 and a half, which is... Kind of surprisingly high considering how low scoring and ugly it was the first time these two teams played. So if you want to take advantage, Bet Online is the place to do it. Sign up today for a free account and enter in our promo code Locked On, and you're going to receive a free 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. They're giving you literally free money to bet with and play at Bet Online, where the game starts. Thank you all so much for making Locked on Vikings and Locked on Bears your first listens of the day, respectively, every single day. Lauren, let's talk about your uh, your little cubbies. What's so Matt Nagy's out, right? That's let's start there, I guess. He's yeah. that's a foregone. Is, is that like official or is that just everybody knows? It's a foregone conclusion, but not official. There was a, a weird okay. report on Wednesday that that he had been told he'd been fired. And then the, they asked him about it. He said, no, I haven't been told I've been fired, but like, 
Every, that, everybody. Well, that happened. Is that the second time that's happened then? Because it happened yeah. in Thanksgiving too. <laughs> yes, that, that's that's the state. <laughs> okay, the so it's over. Um, yeah. So th- then I guess Ryan Pace. I, I I saw something about maybe he's doing a similar reassignment deal that what I think the Vikings might do is spiel. What's the deal with Ryan Pace? Is he going to be able to pick another coach? See, that's that is the million dollar question, and that's the thing that keeps being rumored out there. And I I don't know that there's like a specific point of like legs to like where you can point to as to why it keeps being rumored. It just, it just has, but from, you know, multiple different, you know, call it reporters or speculation or whatever it might be. Like it, it's an idea that keeps coming up as being floated out there. And I mean, a part he's been in the organization now, I think seven years or so, and he does have a good relationship with, you know, the team president and, and ownership and, and so forth. So like they, it's plausible. Like, I mean, and the more people say it, the more it starts to sort of sink in as like, the possible idea, but it doesn't feel like he's necessarily like earned it. Cause it's, it feels hard to, hard to do that without making it feel like some kind of promotion. Like you can't make it, yeah. a, you don't want to promote him to sort of, you know, to reward one winning season in seven years, but you can't just like oh God. actively demote him either. You know what I mean? Like you can't just like, cause like bears fans like the way he's drafted for the most part. I mean, he finds these guys in the fourth and fifth rounds. He missed some first round picks early on that would were except that one time that when he had the second overall pick. Yeah. Like there have been some bad ones, but like on, on the, on the grand scheme of things, like he does compared to other GMs, he does fine in the draft. He finds one to two quality players, pretty much every draft, just not usually with his first couple of picks. So like, there's, a, there's enough there for an argument where I've had to know like Ryan Pace just needs a good head coach. He's gotten enough young talent on this team to like, and he just hasn't been able to get the right coach. So bring in another GM to, to handle maybe the coaching stuff and have Ryan Pace still involved in some of those decisions. There's there's an argument to be made there. And, and I, I really can't get a good sense of, of what the team is going to do. Even Ian Rappaport has kind of said, we don't know. He, he, he could stick around and maybe they haven't decided yet. I don't know what I don't know what the plan is. Yeah, it's. I feel like both these teams are kind of careening toward potentially a, a weird structure that might not be traditional. I'm excited to see what what these organizations dream up. But let's go to the roster. And I want to ask the most burning question that I have. And I tried to get you into it last time we talked, but we had like a meaningful game to preview. So we didn't do that. Um, I kind of feel like the Bears are ruining Justin Fields by putting him in too early and he's getting a panic habit is Justin Fields going to be okay? Am I wrong about that? I I don't know. I like I see him pull his eyes down a lot more than he did in college, and I'm worried about him. Yeah, I think there are some valid fears, right? I mean, you obviously you don't want to ruin him, and you you do get some of those like nervousness of like, okay, like how how are they handling this? And and so like I I don't think the problem was they played Justin Fields too early. I think the problem is they played Justin Fields without a plan for how to play Justin Fields. It wasn't so much okay. the timing, but it was how they handled it when they did play him. And, and Matt Nagy has said multiple times now that like they learned more about how to use Justin Fields after putting him in the starting lineup, like against Cleveland, basically his first game where he was sacked nine times. Yeah. Just, that, I think about that game a lot. They just put him in and said, all right, be Andy Dalton. And he's, he's not, Andy Dolph, yeah. they didn't they didn't do things different. They didn't have a different plan for Fields entering that game, and and so he's he's talked about how like since then now they've they've learned so much about him as a, as a rookie. And like, well, that's that's why you should have been playing him more in the preseason, giving him starters reps through training camp. Like he was always purely the backup, and so the, he was not prepared to start, and they were not prepared to start him. And so like it wasn't that they started him too early per se, like that for his purpose, because I think Fields needs reps like he needs to be on the field to work out the timing of shorter underneath throws because it's just not that's not really what his game has been at Ohio State and to just get those reps against a real opponent with receivers like that, that are in live game situations feels like what he needs to be able to work on speeding up that processing live in games but he needs a coaching staff that can also tailor the offense more to him and to protect him a little bit more from himself in some of those moments and that hasn't been there so like maybe they are slightly ruining it but but I, I but it's it's hard to know what's permanent and what's not, and I think he's been he's been injured a couple of times this season in and out of the lineup a few times to where he hasn't had like that eight game stretch to really ingrain things. He's he's mm-hmm. always been sort of like readjusting each time. So I'm not as concerned that things are cementing in just yet, but I am concerned uh, how much how much real positive development he's gotten and support he's gotten from his team. 
Okay, that makes that makes more sense. I, I'm still worried about that because this yeah. is when you're it's out of your element like that. That's when you pick up habits. And if you pick up a habit, you have to break the habit before you can move forward. And then suddenly that that becomes another year of learning. And then suddenly you're in your third year and you're not good yet. And oh, my God. And, you know, and then there's no patience. That's what I'm worried about with Justin Fields. And honestly, I like Justin Fields a lot. I liked him pre-draft. I'm not going to start disliking him just because he went to my least favorite team. Um, that is, I don't know, that that just... I, I'm worried about him, and I want I want him to succeed, even if that means a more difficult divisional rivalry, just because I like the kid. Yeah. So that that like worries me about about him. I think the the feeling in Chicago is like that fear is in the back of our minds, but most Bears fans feel like he has enough raw talent to overcome, even if he starts in a couple of bad habits. That we see enough of those flashes to be like, okay, Ohio State Justin like Josh Allen this for a minute, where you have yeah. terrible habits, but you're just such a weird god that you can like survive till you get the habits down. Exactly. And that perhaps the next head coach will actually needs to be the one to to put him on the right track. All right. I, I don't know if we'll debate more. I don't know if I buy it because I think as talented as Justin Fields is, he's not Josh Allen. Um, but we'll we'll talk about that more. I do want to talk a little bit about the rest of the roster because you have I mean, this Akeem Hicks situation seems like he's out. Um, I don't know what's what you have, what, what the plan is. If uh, I guess Khalil Mack is pretty much inextricable. So you have that. You'll be able to build around that. What else is on the defense that you're excited about? What else is on the team that you're is Allen Robinson's out? I mean, wh- where, do, where what's the roster at? Where do we go from here? Are we just in another rebuilding mode? Well, that's the that's the problem with the Ryan Pace discussion, right? It's like, where is this roster at? And they they don't have like they're not in salary cap hell, but they're not doing great with financial flexibility because they keep pushing all this dead money down the line. But, you know, they've got right, the bank of um, Galil Mack. Yeah. Um, well, and, and Robert Quinn, too. I mean, they're two of their top five cap hits yeah. are both at the same position. And it, it's a valuable position. But, yeah. you know, that's why they have nobody at cornerback besides Jalen Johnson, because they they opted not to spend there and, and instead spend at the edge rusher and elsewhere on the roster. So, like, d- defensively, like the, the pieces you're, you're really happy about are, are Johnson and Roquan Smith moving forward. And. And of course, like as far as young guys, I mean, of course, Cleo Mack and Robert Quinn are both playing or both have played at, at high levels and they're they're building blocks there. But like Eddie Jackson's been really up and down, missing in action quite a bit this season. You don't know if he's what what he can get back to being. And he's again massive part of your your salary cap. And then, you know, your defensive line, once Akeem Hicks goes, Eddie Goldman's been kind of a disappointment there too. They've got some other rotational guys around, but not not anything crazy. But you need you're gonna need two at least two cornerbacks this offseason. You're gonna need at least two wide receivers because right now the only Chicago Bears wide receiver under contract in 2022 is Darnell Mooney. They have no one else coming back and only so much salary cap space to rebuild all of these positions, plus a couple of holes on the offensive line and you know, tight end with Jimmy Graham moving on. They're gonna need a little bit more depth there. I mean, there's there's a lot of holes on this roster, but there's at least some young guys at each level, but it, it just feels like you're they're gonna need something more and i the idea is also that maybe justin fields can be good enough to elevate the level of play around of, of the players around him enough to mm-hmm. not, be, not be aaron Rodgers or anything but enough to to show that growth in 2023 for, and help the other younger players come along too would you say the the roster maybe needs a little upside <laughs> where where can i get upside <laughs> my new favorite app it's get upside it is awesome all you all you have to do is uh, download the app. It's a free app at the Google Play or App Store, wherever you get apps. Um, download that, and it'll tell you what gas stations are around you that are participating. Go to one of those next time you fill up. Take a picture of your receipt, upload the app, and you just get cash back. 25 cents off a gallon. And if you drive a lot, that's like two, 300 bucks a month. Like that's real money. And there's no catch here. You can cash it out whenever you want, however you want in uh, Amazon gift cards, Google Play, or just a direct deposit. If you don't want to mess with any of that, that's all fine too. No catch to any of this. It is just cash back. And if you enter promo code TOUCHDOWN when you sign up, you can get up to 50 cents a gallon off on your first fill up at the pump. 50 cents a gallon off at the pump just for using promo code TOUCHDOWN with the Get Upside app. All right, so I think we sort of established here in this crossover Thursday, Lockdown Bears, Lockdown Vikings, I think it's sort of in some of our answers, we get a sense of, of where these two teams are. Where I think we're both, as we as we put on this quest of multiple years now of trying to trying to be more <laughs> disagreeable and and debate more. Like, we need antagonism. <laughs> like we, I, I, I do think we were both. I think we both are in this position of like, would you rather be the Bears? Would you rather be the Vikings? And and you would rather be the Vikings, and I would rather be the Bears. In terms yeah. of like. 
current. I think we have something to fight about here. Yeah. Like, and I think we could detect some of that in, in some of our answers. And I guess for, for me, it almost purely comes down to like the bears have Justin Fields in the building and the Vikings have the hope and optimism of being able to maybe also find a rookie quarterback, but it's sort of the devil I know versus the devil I don't. And not that I've done any sort of deep work on this upcoming quarterback draft class, but it, it doesn't, it doesn't seem to particularly wow me and, and more so just that there's always that it's a greater unknown. I mean, Fields is still an unknown too, but at least I've seen enough NFL tape from him to still have like, to still feel like, okay, there's, there, there's enough here that I'm excited about seeing in 2023 with the right head coach. And it feels to me like, well, the Vikings definitely have a better set of supporting cast around whatever their yeah. next quarterback is going to be. I, that's such a, a, the quarterback is such a huge monumental part of that. And I do, I feel so much better about the security that Justin Fields will at least be something. And he doesn't look like a monumental failure bust by any means. I, I need Justin Fields to prove to me that he can operate the basic parts of the game, um, especially as things break down. And I need to see him buck that panic habit. When I watch the Monday Night Football game, which is I, I've watched a lot of Bears games this year for Locked On NFL because I've just been fascinated with them. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not the only Bears game I've watched, but it's certainly the one I've watched the closest. And I just couldn't help but think, man, when it doesn't go the way he thought, Justin Fields just panics. And that just brought me. And this is my own PTSD. That just brought me back to Christian Ponder. And Justin Fields yeah. is not Christian Ponder. Don't let sure. nobody no. mistake me for saying that. But when I kind of first, when, when we all realized, oh, Christian Ponder doesn't have it, when we realized he was a bust, it was because he couldn't stop panicking. And so I just, it just takes me back. I can't not think about it. So here's where I'm at with the Vikings. I think we both agree outside of the quarterback position, Vikings have a better roster, right? They've got a Justin Jefferson and Dalvin Cook and Daniel Hunter and the Bears don't really have that kind of stuff. They've got yeah. a Khalil Mack and what a Darnell Mooney. Like, yeah. um, don't you dare talk crap about Darnell Mooney. We love <laughs> he's Darnell. Not Justin Jefferson. All right. <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> fair, fair. Um, so the Vikings have that in their corner and here's where I'm at. I, I think where, where I see with the Vikings, there are opportunities right now to get some pretty <laughs> intensely cool quarterbacks. The Vikings could trade for Russell Wilson. The bears can't. If the Seahawks would be willing to trade him within the conference, which I don't yeah. think they are, but like theoretically that kind of thing, um, you know, the the Vikings currently, I mean, Kirk Cousins is a dead weight asset. If you ask me and I want to move on from him, but they're not doing that for free. They're going to get draft picks. They're going to get cap space in return. They There will come a path forward through all of that. And I think for the Bears, the path forward right now is hope the next guy you hire can fix Justin Fields. I feel a little bit weird about that. And if you're in a situation, like, let's say Justin Fields does bust out. Let's say he never f fixes that. I'm not saying that will happen, but in that hypothetical scenario, that means the Bears don't get to be competitive until you move on from Justin Fields. And that is what you risk if you cannot fix him. If you can fix him, then the Bears have their quarterback. And obviously, that's a way better spot than a team that doesn't have a quarterback. But I, the, the, the reason I would rather be the Vikings... Um, is because, A, I, I have a lot of trust in the Vikings' ownership, too, to, to navigate these things responsibly. Um, but mostly, it's that the Vikings are in a spot of flexibility. The Bears have one option, and it's fix this dude. And if they can't do that, they're screwed. The Vikings have a ton of options right now, if they so choose. I think that's a fair, that's a fair place to be. I mean, I, I think where we might disagree a little bit is the, the degree of fixing with which Justin Fields needs, right? I, I mean, think we do a disagree. Yeah. On that. And, 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 it's, it's and you, you've watched him more, so people should probably default to you. Honestly, well, no, in some sense, because we can't, we, we can't actually know, right? I mean, we don't know in terms of like when we see him be panicky, you know, we, we don't know exactly. Sometimes he's being coached to it, it's one read and then run they're, they're telling him if that, if that curl route is not there, take off. And it's like, and hmm. ideally you would, you would want fields to have like an actual progression to go through on some, and, and, some place. Yeah. Why are they doing that? Is it yeah. because running is good and that's great? Or would they rather him do three reads and then take off? It, exactly. Like it's, it's, we don't, we don't know some of the reasons why the bears make some of those decisions that they do. And when he's being told to do certain things and when he's doing it on his own, I mean, certainly the, the fumble issues are real in the ball security, but you know, some, sometimes it's, it's playmaking and it's, it's, he wants to be the hero. He wants to, he wants to extend the play and find something downfield and make the big miraculous play. And, and we've seen 
some, I, I was going to use the word enough of those miraculous plays, but I don't know what what number enough is. But we've seen we've seen evidence of a couple against the Vikings for sure. Yeah, and like game winning drive or game go ahead late game go ahead drives that didn't turn out to be game winning, but gave them the lead with under two minutes left that their defense blew. Like he 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 does like what I would say in the podcast is Justin Fields does the really hard things well and doesn't do the easy things very well, and it it feels to me like. It is easier to get him to do the easy things than it is to get a quarterback to do the hard things. And because he can already do a lot of the hard things in terms of like downfield throws and tight windows and and anticipation and some of those throws. And like that's that to me is the stuff that's harder to coach. And and yeah. I feel like it's easier to get him to clean up his footwork a little bit, clean up his delivery a little bit, you know, keep his eyes up a little bit, maybe, maybe speed up the progression a little bit. I don't, but I don't think it has to be like drastically faster. And so like that that's where this disagreement comes, I think, of like how how much work we feel like that that takes, and how difficult it will be to do the work necessary for Justin Fields to potentially become some sort of good to great NFL quarterback. And I, I like the idea of having the path in front of me of like here's the thing that that this team needs to do, as opposed to the Vikings' path of open flexibility. But open flexibility also leaves a lot of room for for mistakes and and wrong steps. Sure. Whereas with Fields, it's like the Bears know exactly what they need to do and they just have to do it. And there's no guessing on what they right. should do with it. It's just, it's, it's presented. It's either achieve this or you fail. And the Vikings have a lot of possibilities to either achieve or fail in a lot of different ways. Yeah. I think we agree on that dynamic. And I think we just both kind of decide to be on a, a different side of it. And maybe that's good. Like I'm kind of poisoned by watching Kirk cousins who does all the easy things, but never does the scramble out, you know, improv scramble drill thing. I think he does that twice a year. <laughs> like that's that's just not part of his game. It's never been part of its game. He's never wanted it to be part of his game. Um, so I'm like very ready to move on to that. That's part of why I kind of fell in love with Justin Fields, because it's like, oh, my God, he has the improv gene. We need that so bad. Um, God, I feel like we could go on for, about this for like two hours. Um, yeah. <laughs> and, and maybe we'll talk about it more in future crossover stuff over the course of the offseason. Lauren, it has been so good to chat with you on this Locked On Crossover. You can find Lauren at Cox Sports One. You can find me at Luke Braun NFL on Twitter. Uh, in the meantime, af after you listen to this, go check out the Locked On Bets podcast. Your boy Q doing a great job over there with Lee Sterling. They will help you uh, figure out what to bet on. I feel like they get on these hot streaks and you got to get in on that. Um, we'll see you all next time. And now that Lauren's gone, we can say my favorite part of every show. And as always, Skull.